So whenever you're using R for data analysis, you're eventually going to come across the situation where you have errors. You type something in, it's incorrect, and it throws an error. And it can be difficult to diagnose what the problem is so you can fix it. This video will show you how to fix your errors in R, and I'll give you a few tips for how to quickly identify what the error is and then resolve it. So for this video, I'll be using R version 4.1.2 in case you want to follow along and I'll have the link to the files for this video in the description. And I'll be providing uh, two tips in this video. The first is how do you search for solutions to your errors in R? The second one is around how to write and test your code so that you can identify the errors as they happen. So first, how do you search for the errors that you're getting in R? Um, and this video is a little bit different in that, you know, I don't have any uh, concrete solutions for what to do with every single time you get an error because it's not that simple. There are lots of different errors you can get and you have to go out and find the answers to them. That's one of the issues with using R. It's open source, it's very powerful, it's free, um, but you have to sort of figure out the problems for yourself. And so I've got an example here where I'm trying to read in a CSV file and save it um, in R's memory as my data. So let me go ahead and run this. And I get this error. And one of the things that I'll often do is I will copy this error as it appears here and then I'll put it into a Google search but I don't copy the whole thing um, usually I'll leave out the things that have quotes in them because they're particular to something that I typed up so what I'll usually do is copy everything else like is not an exported object from and then I'll bring up Google paste it in there and then type in the word the letter R at the end of that. And then you, of course you'll get search results. And one of the ones that I'll often look for is feedback in stackoverflow.com. That's a very popular website. Now, when you're searching for your problem or the error that you're getting, um, it's safe to say that there are lots of people out there who have come across the same problem, the same error that you're coming across. And so most of the time, in my case, it's been in about 100% of the time, um, I'm able to find a solution that because somebody else has had the problem and then I've read what they said on a website like Stack Overflow and I've been able to fix it. If for whatever reason you're not able to, which again should be very, very rare after searching several websites and scrolling through pages, you should be able to find the solution and try it out. Um, but if you're not able to, you can also sign up to something like Stack Overflow and then post about your problem. The second tip is how to write your code so that um, you're able to identify errors as they exist and you're able to resolve them and keep moving on. One of the things that you really want to make sure you're doing when you're writing code is that you test each line of code in order. So once you read in the file here, you'll notice that I read it in after I already did these things. And now I've effectively overwritten that previous, those changes that I made. And so in order to sort of reset R, so that you're able to proceed in a sequential manner and make sure that in the future your code works and it works in the order that it was intended. What I will often do is I will clear out the memory by clicking this little brush, this little um, room here, and then I'll go over to session and then I'll go to restart R and then I'll start from the top again. So I'll run it and then I'll proceed to the next line. And in this way, if I have an error, I'll need to resolve that error. And then once I fix that error and confirm that I fixed that error, I will click on the broom again and then hit session restart. And I'll start, I'll take it from the top again. And my goal with doing this is making sure that, um, by the time I'm done with this iterative process of fixing an error and then starting over again and running everything to make sure everything is working as intended. My goal is that by the time I'm done with that, the finished product is code that works and it will work in the future so that in the future if I open up R again from the beginning 
and then I open up this code and I start running it from the top, I'll be able to go all the way to the end without getting any errors. So that's an important piece. This process is what lots of people call debugging. So I'm going through and getting rid of any errors and making sure that I'm starting from the beginning over, you know, from the top again, to make sure that there are no problems for the final time when I'm done with this code. I hope you found this video helpful. If you want to watch more videos about how to use R for data analysis, please subscribe.